He took over 200 wickets and smashed more than 3,000 runs as a top-class cricketer. But now Freddie Flintoff is on the hunt for a number one as a best-selling author. Soffing his pads for a pen, Freddie's latest offering is a straight-talking Bible that he hopes will provide a welcome distraction from the pandemic. Well, Freddie uh, joins us now, so it's lovely to see you. Thank you very Hi, much Freddie. indeed for uh, for joining us. And um, and this um, this book, I mean, the, the, the actual title of it there, uh, right, with a comma, said Fred. I, I, when, I, yeah. when, you, when I found out what was in it, it's exactly, it sounds like I'm being sat down to have a good talking to. Right, said Fred. And this is what, essentially, you've done. Something like that. Morning, both of you. Yeah, it's um, an original title, and I don't think it's been used before, right, said Fred. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's just amusing. I think during lockdown, I think everyone had a lot of time to think and get all the thoughts together. And I, I don't have too many times I voice an opinion on stuff, but I put it all in this book and it's it's everything from social media to cricket to sport, um, cars, top gear. There's a bit of everything in there, all my takes on it. And I've got to say, my head can be a busy place at times, so it's just getting it all into a book. Well, you're, um, you're not a massive fan of social media. I mean, you sort of know when to use it and when to kind of leave it alone. And you talk about that in the book, don't you? Yeah, I've, I've got a love-hate relationship. I think a lot of people do. There's times with social media, you know you've got to use it. Um, and I'll be on it today, sure, because I've got a book coming out. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then there's times where you see it and you see people putting things on. And I think, for the life of me, why are you doing that? You know, it's just an opportunity a lot of the time to, to show off or try and stay relevant. You know, you, you see it and... People retweet in prayers and that. And to me, that's essentially walking down the street shouting how good you are. Um, and not too many people do that. So I don't think it's right on social media either. And so what are, what are, your, what are your thoughts on influencers? Influencers? You know what? If they can get away with it, why not? Um, I'm not 100% sure what they are or what they're influencing and who they're influencing. Um, it's just one of the things when I was younger, you work hard, don't you? And you try and get to the top of your field where influencers, you can just put a few things out and all the stuff comes your way and you earn a few quid. Um, I think it's more of a reflection on who's watching them rather than the people doing it, um, giving them a platform. And you talk about parenting as well. And I just wondered what sort of parent are you? Because all of us are battling, especially at the moment with lockdown and obviously this other one imminent in some parts of the country, all very much in it. It's really hard with the screen time thing because they're not sort of able to see their friends. They're now using it to contact their friends. They're also doing a lot of their education on it. So I feel like this generation of parents who have really tried to stop their kids having screen time are actually sort of being forced into it. Well, it's a tough one as well because you try and monitor screen time for kids and you go out sometimes or when we could go out and you see tables of families and they've got the kids watching their iPads and watching films through dinner. And that's the time you want to talk to your kids. So you're always trying to limit them, but then school and they go to school and a lot of the work's done on an iPad, so there's just no escape in it. Mm. Uh, so it's just trying to limit that time. Um, but parenting, I think, always going to be a challenge, isn't it? I've got, I've got four kids, 16, 14, 12 and 10 and a half months. Um... And you want to be a good parent, but I don't know what you think, but sometimes I just find myself saying no to things. And I am I think it's like my dad. I'm thinking, why am I saying no? That's a bit, a few years ago, that now. Um, <laughs> one of them is three. Uh, he's nicking all my shoes and the other one's 5'11". Um, and my daughter's oh my 16. Wow. Well, you say he's nicking all your shoes. I mean, uh, I, I think um, You've got you something maybe have some sort of record <laughs> for the amount of shoes bought in lockdown. I bought a few pairs, actually. I, I was sat at home and I got into getting into all these drops and trying to get these trainers. Um, I was acting like a 15-year-old. Um, and I was buying all these trainers. I think it stems from when I was younger, I always loved like Ermaxes and, and Jordans, but I could never afford them. And then now I can buy these shoes, but when they come, I love them so much, I don't even wear them. Oh. I just get them out of the I open a box and think, it's today the day, and, and then I put it away and think, no, no, it's not, I'm, I'm going to pack them. <laughs> today is to always the day. Wear them, otherwise they'll go to waste. Um, you also obviously talk about cricketing in the book and kind of fond memories of that, but also like potentially in the future that you might go back and revisit that, but as, as a coach this time. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd genuinely love to. Um, I've got a lot going on at the minute with various things, but, you know, all I ever wanted to be was a cricketer growing up, and... Although I played for a few years, I, I don't feel like an ex-cricketer now. I just feel like a cricket fan. And I coach my kids and I try and help their mates out. And I watch a lot of cricket. And I'd love to coach one day um, when I'm a bit older. But the problem is there's only two jobs I'd ever want. One would be Lancashire, the other would be England. And 
reading between the lines, I'm not sure how good my chances are, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you've always got telly to, to fall back on. Exactly. And you have got the dream job with Top Gear, haven't you? I'm so lucky because with, with Top Gear, we, we were filming yesterday and um, was in the Lake District. It was beautiful around Wind Windermere. And I was just in a rally car rallying around the Lake District thinking, how good is this? And then you've got League of Their Own and Don't Rock the Boat comes out in a couple of weeks on ITV. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. Every time I walk away, I think today's the day they're going to find me out. Um, but I keep getting asked back. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going with it, Phil. What's, and then uh, what's Rock I'm the Boat, then? You mentioned Rock the Boat. That's a new one. Yes, yeah, a new one, um, and it was filmed a couple of months ago where you had two boats of celebrities rowing from the bottom of Cornwall up to the tip of Scotland. And you see me, you've got like Fleur East, you've got um, Adam from, from Emmerdale, um, Jack Finch from Love Island, Craig Charles, Lucy Fallon, and it was bonkers. They put them in a boat. Some of them were fitter than others, like Denise Lewis, but they had to row through the night on some all the way to Scotland. And it was breaking people. And I was hosting it with um, AJ Dudu, who's amazing. And we had, a, we had a proper laugh, and it was amazing to watch. I think it's only a couple of weeks. Oh, good. Well, we'll have to look out for that one. In the meantime, Freddie, it's great to see you. Um, this is the book we're talking about. Freddie Flintoff, right, said Fred. And the BBC said it's very funny, according to the book on the front. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Freddie. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>